Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Reimagined, a Hidden Compass YouTube series. I am your host, Lauren Eckert, and I am so stoked to be joined today by co-founders of Hidden Compass, Sabine K. Bergman and Savani Babu. Sabine, for a quick introduction to both of these beautiful, wonderful, awesome humans, Sabine is the co-founder and co-CEO of Hidden Compass. She's also an award-winning travel science and nature writer. She's an editor, environmental researcher, community coordinator, an all-around fantastic storyteller. Savani is also the co-founder and co-CEO and creative director of Hidden Compass. She is an award-winning journalist and nature photographer. And Savani is a former public defender and modern adventurer and is currently working on publishing her first book to which listeners should stay tuned for updates, right, Spotty? Yes, indeed. I'm sure you have plenty of spare time this month to work on <laughs> an right. additional book, right. in addition That's to everything else you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> well, very impressive credentials, and I'm really excited to talk to you both again today. We've had opportunities to talk on the podcast, and of course, folks watching this channel will have been well introduced to you, but yeah, I'm thrilled to have you on to the series to talk about exploration in modern contexts, new ways of storytelling, and to get into a little bit about the Alliance, which is launching pre-sales this month, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Yeah. Thank awesome. you. We're excited to be here. And yes, pre-sales launched already, actually. And yeah. So yeah, mm -hmm. pre-sales are available and the official launch is coming up in November. Wonderful. So this will be released in November. So likely when this video is out, the- It'll still be, it'll still be pre-sales okay. video is out. The uh, actual launch is happening on November 17th. Okay, perfect. So you have time for pre-sales still yes. if you're watching, which is excellent. Yes. Well, wonderful. So I'm excited to have you guys here today to talk about the Alliance. But before we get into that, you know, I think the audience of this video needs no introduction to Hidden Compass as a whole, but- at this point, we've had an opportunity to talk with a diversity of folks about words like exploration and discovery, about reimagining and transforming those words. And we, as we move into November, are talking with folks about how they are reimagining discovery, exploration in a modern era, if they're reimagining those things, or you know, some of the folks we've talked to have talked about using alternative words like modern adventure, for instance. And so I'd love to get both of your thoughts on those early videos, on exploration, on the new ways of storytelling and uh, adventure that Hidden Compass is envisioning. Yeah, I want to, oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Siv. I, I want to <laughs> jump in on, on this series for a second and just acknowledge how excited we are that, that this is happening, that we are having the series and we're able to put these conversations out there, right? That are sometimes nuanced, sometimes make people uncomfortable, but totally. very important conversations to have. And I am grateful that we get to, to put that out there through this series. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I, I love the title of this series being reimagined because that's kind of, that's what we do a lot at Hidden Compass. <laughs> Hidden Compass was, was started as reimagining travel journalism in a way, although a lot of it is in reimagining these things, pulling inspiration from what has come before yeah, and, totally. and bringing it into a new light. Um, and oh, so that's that. why I think thinking about exploration, I mean, there's so much to pull from, right. um, you know, old school exploration was so influential and you know obviously we have to acknowledge that, that some aspects of previous eras of exploration are horrific in retrospect and and your other guests talk about this you know colonialism genocide and war but there also are benefits from those endeavors they shaped the world as we know it and so it's been really cool for me in working in hidden compass to look back over um the course of recent modern history and think about what has inspired us as individuals, as co-founders, and thinking about what a 21st century version of those things would be. Right. Right. And I think sometimes when we think about reimagining things, we, we think that means we have to throw out everything that came before. And, and often that's not the case, right? It, it is acknowledging those pieces that should not make it into 
you know, the, the future or even the present, but, but also acknowledging that there are pieces of it that could continue to be beneficial. Yes. And I want to talk about this fervor of discovery, which I think is something that you and I, Savani, both have been inspired by from previous eras of exploration. You know, we talk about these huge moments in human history, the age of enlightenment and the celebration of reason, the scientific revolution, what we refer to as the age of exploration, and how amazing it is that people were willing to risk life and limb in the name of learning. And the general public's love of discovery and right. academics. Right. The proliferation of nerdiness. <laughs> the time, you know, we talk a lot about nerdiness at Hidden Compass. And I just think about all of these examples of how people were just drawn into discovery, the general public. I mean, in, in 1930, when the Natural History Museum in New York City showed a film on one of Einstein's relativity relativity theories, the place was literally mobbed by thousands yeah. of people who rushed the lecture hall doors and were trampling people to get in to learn about physics, you know? Um, or I think about the 19th century's love of geology and this book that was published in, like, in the early 1800s by Roderick uh, Murchison on a rock called Greywack. Um, <laughs> and it was a bestseller. I mean, one of his fans <laughs> described this book as having quote, a total want of literary attractiveness, which means that it was totally unreadable and it was a bestseller and it went through four editions and people just wanted to learn about rocks. I mean, how amazing, amazing is that? All right, and I think in this modern era, we often think that there really isn't discovery yet to be made, right? That everything has been discovered. The age of exploration is over. And certainly that Victorian age of exploration that people talk about is over, but the idea that there isn't more left to discover and that modern exploration is somehow boring or less you know exciting than what came before is just a fallacy and 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 so much of it is about how our attention is drawn to so many different things that we don't know where to look mm -hmm. and and that the you know the discoveries that are being made have such a difficult time even making it into the public the eye news cycle, all. yeah, right, and and so that's a lot of of where we found this, and also this feeling of of collective human endeavor, which no doubt was largely a Western thing. You know, we 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 do talk about the space race, but when you think about the people, when we you know when the first moon landing happened, that wasn't just wasn't just a Western thing that was celebrated. It was celebrated by people all over the world because it felt like we did something, right? That we all felt a little bit a part of it. People, more people felt part of it than just the United States or yeah, yeah. Western Europe. 600 million people watched the moon landing live, totally. which was uh, almost a fifth of the world's population at the mm -hmm. time. Right. I believe. I think it's something like 16 or 17 percent, but it's just remarkable. Yeah. Yeah, I wonderful discussion. I think there's so much to unpack there, starting with the attention to and desire for nuance. It was one of the, the first things you said about being excited about the series. And as we've all discussed, it's something that excites me about Hidden Compass and their model, your model of, of storytelling. Uh, I think that we live in an era where we are desperately wanting for not just the things you mentioned, collective human effort, you know, um, interest, shared interest in discovery and, and new ways to understand the world, but also nuance. We, we yeah. live in a really polarized news cycle and information ecosystem. And so I'm really grateful for this space to talk to a lot of different people and seek nuance and insight in the in-betweens and the gray area, because it's uncomfortable sometimes to live there, but it is in that discomfort of, you know, holding tension or, or, discussing new ways to move forward, I think that there's a lot of opportunity and growth, which is one of the, the cool aspects of learning new things that Hidden Compass wants to share is that discovery can actually happen between ideologies or in means of storytelling, which is really exciting. Uh, and I also think so much of what you just spoke to this, you know, for one, I think collective human endeavor has been shared in a really Western light, but is 
universal in terms of our behavioral ecology as people, our, our evolutionary history as people, that fundamentally what makes us unique is our big brains, sure, but is also our incredible capacity for collaboration, for collective human effort. I mean, like, on my darkest days, I remember that what makes our species really, really cool isn't our ability for competition. Uh, what makes our species unique is our incredible ability for compassion and collaboration. So I love yes. the focus on that. And I think it is, is a very much beyond Western culture, though. And this is something that hopefully is changing in a modern era of different storytelling. Those stories have focused on Western endeavors. So I think that's all really wonderful stuff to bring to the fore. And yeah, I'm really feel really lucky to get to live in this nuance. And you know, what I love about Hidden Compass and you both is is the goal is not to have answers to anything. The goal is to have discussion, have discovery occur on the level of individuals, of tension, of nuance. So I, I think that's a really, really great contribution to the discussion that's occurring on Reimagined. And thank you both yes. for it. Yeah, well, I, I love that we can um, talk about both, not both sides, but kind of the spectrum of the benefits and the darkness um, right. around exploration, which is a very loaded word. And there's reimagining that, but also, and this is very much your thing, Lauren, to reclaim words like this and to release them from belonging to a certain group of people to everybody. And this nature totally. of collaboration right now and what discovery looks like, it's more collaborative than ever before. I mean, uh, you see the teams that work together um, on scientific discoveries, on academic discoveries and all different kinds of disciplines. And you see all of those names in the papers. And that is, that is something that is shifting yeah. uh, in the world right now where so many people are working together across disciplines, across continents, um, across generations. Yeah. And across cultures, which I think is the yes. piece that has long been missing. Yes. Right? That's, that's a big piece of what was horrific about older ages of exploration is that it was colonial, right? It was about taking, it was yeah. about how can this place benefit us, right? It was exploitation. And certainly that is still a battle that is being fought. Right. It, but it is more and more you are seeing that that modern exploration is different. Right. It's about, you know, what can we learn about a place? And it's about going deeper. And how can we do it ethically? And how mm -hmm. can we collaborate with other cultures and other people and, you know, other communities rather than how can we exploit this and what can we take from it? Yeah. yeah and and who's leading the discussion, who's right. telling the story, who's benefiting from say travel or from, you know, exploration, who's doing the exploring, I think matters right. a lot. And uh, Lord knows we have many, many barriers yet to overcome, but sure. I think you're right in that man, finally. And, and I like I can't remember which one of you said it, but one of you mentioned that like a lot of what we're calling modern or new in terms of how we're relating to each other or telling stories is actually um, borrowed from or the product of us learning from other than Western cultures, indigenous cultures, you know, a variety of cultures around the world have very different approaches to these things that have been subsumed by systems like colonization. And uh, I think it's important to recognize that, especially, for instance, in the academic space, in the world I live in, in conservation, a lot of what uh, settler scholars like myself are learning is how to get out of the way and follow the lead of Indigenous authors or scholars who are drawing on, you know, historical Indigenous law, Indigenous epistemologies to lead the way. So there's this really neat, uh, I think, in addition to new discoveries at, at these forefronts that very much still exist. Oh my God, we know so little about the universe in which we live, right. even though we feel like we know a lot, right. but also that there's a lot of relearning that's occurring or, or rather rebalancing of power so that a lot of those other ways of doing things, better ways of doing things in many cases can come to the fore, which is a really exciting time to be alive. Super crazy, but really exciting time to be alive. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. And Excuse me. And this is also, it's, it's interesting to be launching this now, 
Mm -hmm. at this time where yes, all of these remarkable discoveries and these changes in, in exploration and discovery are happening, but also at a time when nuance and science and journalism and history, history, which is one that people often kind of skip over, is under attack, right? And, and there is a movement to make it less nuanced, right? To make it black and white, and this is all good, or this is all bad, or this happened and this didn't happen. Mm-hmm. And you have these two things happening at once that are very much in conflict with each other. And so it is an interesting time for us to not only be launching this and to be focusing yeah. on, on this type of thing, but also to be inviting people to stand up as part of this alliance we're building and to show, you know, to say that they are willing to defend science, history, journalism, hope, right? Yeah. Nuance, these things that, that so much of what is out in the world would have us believe don't really exist or don't yeah. mean anything. Yes. And I yeah. want to add that reimagining exploration isn't just about the people at the frontiers of discovery. It's about everybody else who is supporting these endeavors and uh, empowering people to sink into that kind of enthusiasm and excitement and curiosity and courage. You know, we talk a lot about curiosity and courage at Encompass, but these ideals that we have that what would the world look like if people were empowered to do that? And the idea of the Alliance being this challenge of a passive audience in media and how Savani and I had this moment of, we live in an age with an internet where people can connect with and interact with what's happening. Mm -hmm. Um, with media companies, and it is largely untapped by our competitors. And there's this wide door of opportunity for us to walk through and say, hey, like step out of the audience, be more than just a passive reader, have a say in what happens, meet the people who write these stories. And, you know, this is kind of dovetailing into the alliance and all the cool things that we want to offer people. But there are all of these things we're thinking of giving people access to kind of behind the curtain of what happens um, in travel journalism, in, in science journalism, in you know historical journalism, all these yeah. sort of things. And then also giving people a voice to support modern efforts of exploration, which I'm yeah. really excited about. Yeah, <laughs> so really, I mean, really voice, well put. And also a community, right? It's not just about giving them a voice as individuals. It's also about introducing them to a community of people who also value these things. Mm -hmm. and allowing them to combine their voices and their efforts to make them more powerful and have more of an impact and and to be able to stand up in a cohesive way and and defend these values that we all share. So we're deep in talking about the value of the Alliance now, and it's been a beautiful transition into it. And I'm really struck by the commentary, the observation, um, that is a fundamental part of Hidden Compass and the Alliance, which is that despite incredibly rapid changes to the way people are understanding, trusting and consuming media, few media companies have, and saying this, I don't want to bash the media writ large because there are lots of incredible people working hard, but the models, the overarching systemic models of media haven't adapted much to these, these, fundamental changes in how we consume information where it's available to us. Um, So can you tell us a little bit about sort of, you talked about the values at the root of the Alliance, but can you tell us about what the Alliance offers for community members? Yeah, Yeah. so there's a whole host of benefits um, and we imagine that they will only continue to grow alongside the Alliance. One of the things that I want to talk about is the Pathfinder Prize, what we're calling the Pathfinder Prize. So we talked about previous ages of exploration and there were these societies of exploration in the past of usually wealthy, well-connected people who had access to explorers and expeditioners and could support them and have a say in those expeditions. Um, And the Pathfinder Prize is our way of imagining what that would look like in a more inclusive way. So as an ally or a member of the Alliance, you have the ability to vote um, for an expedition that Hidden Compass will fund. And the expedition that kind of wins the voting 
is awarded the Pathfinder Prize and sets out on some sort of voyage of discovery. The first one will be in 2023. And so and I want to oh, I want to jump in here and because uh, when we floated this by current readers, they were excited about it, but there was also a little bit of apprehension about well, how do we know what should yeah. be it? Should be <laughs> sure, which is fair. And so we're not just throwing people into the deep end and, and saying, here are all the things that have been proposed. You know, yeah. which one do you want us to fund? Yeah. We are going to have a, an advisory board that helps us vet proposals. Amazing. So we can identify the ones uh, that we are excited to fund and then let our allies, our alliance members take it from there. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a so democratic process to you know, democratizing, democratizing. Wow. That was quite, mm -hmm. quite the mouthful. Uh, <laughs> This thing that you well described was in the hands of the elite, white, wealthy uh, for decades. Oh. What a cool reimagination of supporting exploration, supporting storytelling, rather. Um, yeah, it's awesome. That's so exciting. And, yeah, and, and the, the allies will also get access to sort of behind the scenes of those expeditions and get a better understanding of what goes into that kind of discovery. Right? We often just see the final product and we don't really get a sense of what is behind that and how much planning and you know the risks and the benefits and all of the things that don't make it into the final product. And yeah. sometimes the most beautiful things don't make it into the final product. Totally. The relationships that we build along the way and, uh, and those types of things. And so they'll, they'll get a chance to you know, get behind the scenes and, and see some of that as well. Yeah, and I'm excited to see what kind of proposals come in because we are purposefully, you know, widening the scope of what this could be. You know, these it could be so many different aspects of exploration. When we talk about modern exploration, it could be artistic, it could be documentary, it could be, you know, uh, scientific, it could be cultural, it could be, you know, related to linguistics. It could be so many different projects. And so we're kind of throwing it out there as, you know, what what do you all want to do? <laughs> you know, so it, it's, there's two sides of this. There is the allies having a vote in the expedition that gets funded, but then also this opening um, of, of our doors to proposals from people all over the world to see what, what people come up with. Right. And we've always taken a broad view of what constitutes exploration, right? So often it, we use that word and the first thing it conjures up is, is physical exploration. Yeah. And it's, you know, mm -hmm being the first to go to this place and, and figure out what it's all about, but that colonial. Yeah. Forebears. Right. Yeah. Right. But so much of exploration, it can be more than that, right? There is still physical exploration to be done, right? We don't know anything really about the ocean floor and things like that, mm -hmm. but there is so much modern exploration that isn't physical and it's, it is scientific, historical, ethical, cultural, all of these things that Spain just mentioned. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So that's, that's one of the benefits of yeah. being we're, an ally. We're also really excited. And I'm, I'm, so there are some other benefits, which we'll talk about. Well, one that I'm really excited about it because it, it just kind of takes me back to my childhood is that we are also 2% of the, um, the fees for the Alliance. We're donating to the Captain Planet Foundation. Uh, so for those who are not of a certain age, Captain Planet was a cartoon <laughs> in the, I don't know, probably early 90s. For the youth. And, yeah, yeah. major culture, because I, I mean. Major culture, absolutely. Yeah, totally, totally. <laughs> but it is an organization that has been around for 30 years. And what they do is they essentially give grants to youth environmental conservation projects and help fund these projects that 1.6 million kids across the U.S. have participated in over wow. the years. And so it is this idea of emboldening and, and empowering the next generation of environmental leaders. And so, so cool. I'm really excited that, that we not only get to launch this alliance and do these things that we're excited about, but we also get to help plan a little bit for the future yeah. and, and try and leave things a little bit better than, you know, than where we are now. Yeah, that's so exciting and fantastic. And so you've talked about two things that the Alliance members have access to or support. Mm -hmm. And obviously sort of the underlying current that I find really, really valuable, especially as we've discussed in a modern era where we have more opportunity to interact with the media we consume uh, 
one of the underlying benefits is getting to support the type of storytelling and journalism and et cetera yes. you want to see yeah. in the world. And so, yes. you know, for me, that's really whether through Patreon or through reader supported journalism, uh, there are so many cool ways to use your dollars to vote for what kind of contents and what kind of storytelling and what values underlie that storytelling exists in the world. So mm -hmm. obviously that's another uh, highlight of something like the Alliance. Do you, is there anything else you want to share about? Yeah, there are there. Well, there are a number of benefits that we haven't even touched on and, and we're not going to get to all of them, but what you sure. said, what you said resonates specifically with one of the benefits, which is each alliance member, each ally also gets a $20 credit per year to contribute directly to one of the fundraising campaigns awesome. that we, or to several of the fundraising campaigns that we run with every storyteller we publish. So awesome. for those who are unfamiliar with our model, we, we pay our writers, we pay our storytellers and our photographers. But in addition to that, we also launch fundraising campaigns with every single story we publish. And the proceeds of those campaigns, we split 50-50 with the the writer and so 50 percent supports hidden compass and the work we do and 50 percent goes to the to the writer and so that's an additional paycheck and so people who are allies who are part of the alliance will get 20 dollars in credit to put directly in towards the stories that resonate with them the stories that move them the storytellers whose work they want to support uh, and we also give people access to our events. So our, our monthly speaker series is well, included as part of the membership. Those are normally paid events, but they're part of the membership. And with pre-sales in particular, until November 17th, we're including a free ticket to our annual Ethos of Exploration event. And so every year we have, we're going to have a speaker. This will be our inaugural event. Uh, but a speaker who embodies this modern form of exploration that we're talking about. And this year, I'm really excited. It's it's photographer Joel Sartor. Yeah, I saw. I was like very excited about that. Yes, and his work is so incredible. And it, he's going to talk about his his 15 year quest to document the world's species and, and to create a record of biodiversity mm -hmm. and the existence mm -hmm. of these animals. And I mean, that's just such an incredible mission. Yes. that he's been on for awesome. so long. Yeah, it's something something like 12,000 portraits of species. Is the goal, uh, and he's done 9,000 so far, I believe. Yeah. More than 9,000. Um, uh, his work, I just, as a biased conservation scientist, because I live for this sort of stuff, right? Mm -hmm. it, it is such a great representation of the interfaces you guys were talking about of technology and conservation and values and recognition that we live in a world where we're rapidly seeing the degradation of habitat for many of these species and they may disappear. Right. And Joel's work is not just to support the protection of those species by creating these just like deeply wonderful, I keep wanting to say humanizing, but of course that isn't the right word, but the uh, personal portraits of yes. these wildlife species that one, generate interest in protecting them, but two, create a catalog of biodiversity yeah. on a planet that's facing really immense biodiversity loss. And it's all happening from studios. You know, this isn't, he's not chartering Boat. Well, I'm sure he asked you sometimes, but to some grand physical location, it's it's exploration or storytelling at the interface of photography and recognition of future challenges and hope. And yeah, I just had to had to say what a great pick for for a first representation of the sort of work uh, that Hidden Compass and and the Alliance as part of Hidden Compass will do. Because yeah, it's a great example of the time we're in and how we can bring our skills and storytelling to the challenges we face. Oh my gosh, the photos are so great. Yes, they are. One of my favorite yeah. photos in the whole world. Yeah, they're, they are moving. Sometimes they're funny. It just depends. <laughs> they're, yeah. they're incredible, incredible portraits of these totally. animals. Yeah, oh, and allies okay. will receive a copy of Joel's new book, which is either about to come out or just came out, um, which are Photo Arc Wonders which it's a, it's a book that has some 450 images wow. um, in it by, taken by Joel. Um, and so, it's, it's going to be a signed copy. So yes. They'll, Amazing. They'll be a signed uh, copy. Uh, yeah. And they'll also so cool. get to join us for, so after the main event, there will be an allies uh, only sort of Q and a cocktail awesome. hour, virtual, uh, mm -hmm. virtual of course. 
And so these are the types of things that allies can look forward to uh, in the membership. And, and we haven't, we always feel uncomfortable talking about price, but that's such a part of this also. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's always the part that feels a little icky, but it is part of the deal. So, uh, so for the pre, during the pre-sales, the price is $129. It's $149 normally. But uh, but tickets alone for Joel's event are seventy five. So yeah. you get that. Yeah. It's a deal for yeah. an entire year of these benefits. And I cut Savani off, but I think I know what you're going to yes. say. Yes. Is that you know you have access to all of these speaker series events, which I think it's around two hundred and fifty dollars worth of tickets you get um, for that for that membership, and you know plus all of the perks and and things we've been talking about. And if you know, we can't go into detail about everything that's in the Alliance right now, but if you're watching this and curious, you can just go to our website and click on Alliance and yep. you'll get to see the benefits there and you'll get to um, buy a presale um, for a membership that will start on November 17th when the Alliance launches in last yes. year. Yes. And shout out to Tim. I'm sure he'll hyperlink all of that information below <laughs> <Yeah>. for, <laughs> for quick yeah. access. Uh, but yeah, I highly encourage everyone to go and check it out and, and to keep in mind, you know, it's, it is an era where <coughs> more and more media organizations are asking for financial support from readers to continue right. to do the work they do. So I don't think it's un, unreasonable right. or unusual, you know, to talk about the prices and what those prices facilitate for for Definitely, your audience. Yeah. And this is this is the you know the trade off. We don't have we don't bombard people with ads. We don't sell user data. Totally. We oh. don't have a subscription that's passive, right? We we right. ask people to participate rather yeah. than just consume. Mm -hmm. And and this is that trade off. And and that was a very conscious decision from the beginning, right? We mm -hmm. a big part of we talked about sort of what is failing in media organizations, and and a big part of that is instead of driving you know, the business model, they were sort of driven by the sure. business model when the internet came along. And, and a big part of that is, is now why our, you know, we're seen more as transactions, it's right? It's about what data can people get from us so that they can sell it. And that's how they're going to make money. And we don't do that. So this is what we do instead. Yeah. So this is, you know, being an ally is a vote of confidence in a new model for media and journalism that is empowering to the journalists and the storytellers and the, the people who benefit from those stories, um, as well as a, a vote of confidence in the modern era of exploration. Yeah. Um, and being an ally of all these things that Savani said, mentioned earlier are under attack, being an ally of science, of journalism, of history, of hope, um, and standing up and saying, uh, no, we want, we envision a, a better version of this moving forward and we wanna do it together. Yeah, and we want nuanced, inclusive storytelling that considers so uh -huh. many stories come to mind as I say this, but considers the social, ecological, economic, you know, right. diverse perspectives of the, the interfaces of the time we're living at. And yeah, yeah, I think that's great. I, I have to ask because this is the reimagined series, mm -hmm. why the word alliance? You know, you you mentioned yeah. a couple of times not only are there these benefits, but a core aspect of Hidden Compass at large beyond the alliance and within the alliance is community building. Yeah. Um, obviously virtual community building, but as we've all learned during the pandemic, we're in deep need of community. I mean, we knew this before, but like yeah. that has been certainly highlighted for me in the last two years. Mm -hmm. um, so can you talk a little bit about your choice of word, alliance? What does alliance mean to you in this, in this context? Yeah, I think it was a very, not I think, it was a very <laughs> conscious choice on our part because we wanted it to be something stronger than just a community, right? It's, it's not just a community. It is a community, of course, but it's standing up for something that we all believe in and not just standing up for it, but supporting it and promoting it and being a part of advancing these values that we, that we hold as important. And the word ally has a lot of connotations right now yeah. and, and connotations that we think still fit here. And it was a conversation we had because, mm, because we do live in a time when these things are legitimately under attack. And when people are, you know, we've seen the effect of the attack on science and journalism over the last several years, but particularly during the pandemic. Oh yeah. 
Oh, yeah. oh, right. oh, halfway. As a science yeah. communicator myself, it has Absolutely. Been, yeah. And time, history. Time for reflection. Yeah. Right. And history, right? We're seeing that with all of the ridiculousness that is happening around what is taught in schools and the boogeyman that's been created of this, you know, critical race theory and all that kind of stuff. Right. And, yeah. and so history at, and, and at a very sort of emblematic level, the conflicts over things like statues, yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. And things like that. And so we have these fundamental disciplines that are under attack. We, you know, we did an event on climate change and uh, hosting a climate scientist talking about past climate yeah. changes. And it was flagged as political when it came to advertising. And so we live in a time where these issues shouldn't be, but are political. And oh, that hits me in my bones. That is upsetting, Savani. It is. Ooh. It is. It absolutely is. Ooh, and yeah. similarly, you know, our, we have an upcoming event with, uh, with Rachel Scott, who's the ABC White House correspondent, uh, yeah. White House and co congressional correspondent, where we're talking about this relationship, this fraught relationship between the press and the public. Fraught, but also incredibly important. Mm -hmm. And so... The use of the word ally was was a conscious choice in in supporting these types of values and, and issues. Yes, I, I don't think there's anything I could add that Svani hasn't covered so eloquently <laughs> just then. Excellent. Yeah, I in all of what you're discussing, I think a, a fundamental underlying piece that we were not the first to talk about by any means is, is an attack on on truth on on science, on history, on, um, on our ability to decipher evidence. And I think that it's, as you mentioned at the beginning, to loop back around, what a time to be launching the Alliance, what a time to be presenting Hidden Compass on offering to the world, because it is this intense moment of, you know, reflecting on what has transpired in the last decade, two decades, you know, 10 decades, yeah. and what is to come in these in our basic understanding of knowledge and information. And there's lots of opportunity, as I mentioned, with you know, following the lead of indigenous knowledge holders and scholars and you know, a whole slew of scholars proposing these new ways to pursue understanding each other and our place in the world, like scholars in critical race theory. Um, and then this is juxtaposed with some pretty scary uh, politicizing of science and potential yeah. breakdowns of how we assess truth. So that's all really big picture, but just to say what it, what it, a truly incredible time it is to be engaging in this work that you guys are doing. And I thank you for it because it's hard. I imagine it's incredibly difficult, but really important. Uh, so yeah, I'm grateful to you both. Well, well we're, we're grateful to be able to do this and it is, a lot. It's a lot of yeah. work and it's really challenging and it's, you know, we're in crunch mode right now, but it yeah. also, this is something that we have envisioned for years. And I get goosebumps at the idea that this is actually happening. Yeah. Um, and that we get to, cause we've been teaching this for so long. <laughs> you know, like this is coming, this is coming, this is coming. And then we right. actually get to be like, it's here. Um, and that's going to happen in just a matter of weeks. Yeah. Uh, which is wild to me. Um, it's really exciting. Elusive as well. Yes. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Definitely. And, you know, we, we are so in the weeds that having a conversation like this is really nice because we get to yeah. back and like, wait a second. Right. Yeah. And, and the details aside, we're just really excited. It's a big picture. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, I'm, I'm also excited. I'm excited for you both. I'm grateful for all the work you've done. Your team has done and really excited to watch you grow and evolve and continue in these really nuanced spaces and discussions and offer the world's wonderful stories and access to wonderful humans doing wonderful things. Uh, so on that note, anything else you want to add for listeners uh, or any parting words about the Alliance? Again, you can find that hyperlink below this video and by you know, navigating to the Alliance tab on the Hidden mm -hmm. Compass page. Yes. The only other thing I'll add is a thank you for yeah. everyone who has supported us so far, for everyone who has contributed to the fundraising campaigns, which I think we've raised more than $13,000 for yeah. journalists over the past year. And we only publish 20 stories a year. So that amazing is incredible. Um, and this is just the first year 
Um, so I just thank you to everyone who has done that. Thank you to people who have already, who have supported the speaker series. Thank you to those of you who have bought pre-sales to the Alliance and our early allies. Um, and thank you to everybody watching. We, we can't, we can't do this without you. And we're excited that you're with us. Amazing. And I'll, I exactly. And I'll just add a big thank you to the people who've been with us and supporting us from the very beginning, when this was just a little side project and a little digital magazine that Sabine and I thought we would run while we also had our freelancing <laughs> careers <laughs> yeah. and who have stayed with us from day one. And, and there's so many of them too. And so, yes, I mean, everyone's been said and, and just big thank yous all around. And thank you to you, Lauren, for having us today. Yes. So so to to this has been such a hopeful project to work on and such a, a delightful part of my morning. One last quick question that came to mind as you were both talking just now, as a grad student, not mm -hmm. everyone may be financially able to support you guys in this way. Do you have any other asks in terms of non-financial means that folks can support your mission if they can't, you know, pay for an annual subscription or I guess subscription is the right word, annual uh, alliance fee? Mm -hmm. Always. And we, we are always grateful when people share the stories we publish. Right, and amplify these voices that we are so excited to put out into the world with these writers and photographers and artists that we get to work with. And that is, is something that is incredibly valuable and incredibly appreciated. Yes. And also um, check out, we have student discounts for events. And, oh, Brad. Um, okay. If you're, if you're a member <laughs> of our newsletter, you'll see, you know, we mentioned the different discounts and, and a student discount is one of those things. Um, Wonderful. Yeah. Said. Yep. yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you both so very much. We will be back next week with another interview regarding new ways to storytell and explore as it were. Uh, and, and echoing the gratitude from Sabine and Savani. I'm so grateful for everyone who takes the time to listen and engage. And yeah, thank you all. We'll see you soon. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks, Sabine and Savani. Thank you.